Hello, my name's Joe Lewis. I'm your host. You're watching Justice Now, a program that shows you the prejudice and bias in our family court system. I have a special guest here today. His name is Mr. Uh, Timothy Head. He is a, a member and uh, ex-president of the uh, Coalition for it's equal parents for equal equal parents for movement for in, in in Henrietta, and um, I'd like to welcome you to our show today. Pleased to be here. Okay. Thanks, Joe. All right. Great. Great. Um, first, I want to start off by asking you: um, um, How long were you married before you you and your wife were? Nearly seventeen years. Is you and your wife were married seventeen years? Yes. How many children? Three children, ages eight, ten, and twelve at the time of the divorce. Okay. All right. And when did the divorce? Two thousand one. Two thousand one. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, what? Spark the divorce, just un, you, you, you guys both couldn't get along or? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had what I would consider to be a, a pretty good relationship for a long period of time. And for whatever reasons, um, marriage was coming apart. Okay. No, no particular reasons. I'd rather just um, kind of express to you the fact that in, in most people's minds, they would consider um, me to be a, a good father and a, and a good good husband okay all right now um, so how did you wind up into the into the uh, court system did you serve her with divorce papers or did she serve you no she served me with divorce papers uh, August 1st of 2001 okay and um, a couple of weeks later uh, an, an order of protection order of protection what was the order of protection for well what was it for? It was a strategy that she was using to give her an upper, upper leg on, on the divorce. What was, she, what was the allegations entailed in the... <clears throat> um, according to the allegations, I threatened her. Okay. That's what she said. Okay. So you were uh, served with an order of protection? Which, yeah, I, I was met at the door by two police officers that said I had 45 minutes to get my clothing and get out. Okay. Now, um, you were still in the home at that time. Correct. correct. So that order of protection basically moved you out of the home. Removed me from the home. Okay. Yes. All right. And once you moved out, uh, where, where were you staying? Where were you First place at? I went. I had an option to either go into a, um, an apartment rental and, and kick my tenant out, basically. Okay. Or um, move into the basement of my, my mom, which I chose. Okay. That was a little bit more compatible when, I, when I'd be seeing my children, and I just thought in the interim I didn't have many options. Okay. And were you working at the time when this happened? Oh, I've always worked. Okay. What, what type of work were you doing? Sales manager. Okay. All Most, right. uh, you know, mid-management, mid uh, pretty solid position. Okay. Okay. So now you're in the, the court system for the order of protection. Yeah. Which, which came first? Were you, were you in a divorce court first, or was the order of protection dealt with first? Order of protection first. Order of protection was first. Cool. See, what I decided to do was, um, because it was a false allegation, I decided to challenge it, and where orders of protection are heard are in family courts. Okay, of course, of course. Now, um, who was the judge? Uh, Morton. Judge Morton was judge the judge? Judge Morton. Okay. At the time. I don't, okay. I don't even know if he's practicing anymore. I think he may be still <clears throat> in the, in the court system. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's in the uh, in the divorce court, but I think he's still down there. So how long did the did the process go? As far as well, the court? okay, that's an interesting uh, question because I initiated it to have a hearing right away. Okay. Because of the fact that it was alleged only, it it really was fabricated, and I thought that if I could get in there in a hurry, um, I could get more time with my children because part of the order of protection stipulated the time I could see my children. Okay. It was really setting the groundwork for what was to come. Uh, and how often did you get to see your kids through in this? It, it wasn't enough by, by any stretch of the imagination. The, the order allowed me um, to have my kids on Wednesdays for dinner between the hours of 5 and 7.30 and if it was a you know, summer I could keep them till eight. Some some ridiculous stipulation like that. Okay, so you went to trial. Was there a trial or? 
Yeah, I had a firm belief that if you get in front of um, a court of law, whatever level of court it was, that the truth would come out. I mean, that's what you grow up learning and believing. Okay. And when you say the truth, what type of evidence did you present to the court to, 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 to verify that the allegations that she was making was actually well, false? Well, I had, I had a uh, witness with me that was actually at my work when the phone call came in. The alleged phone call that she said occurred that I called her and threatened her by telling her something was going to happen at 1 o'clock. And this was in the police report? It, it, yes. was this, this was in the police report. This was in the order of protection. And she stated this in court. Correct. Or her, I'm her quite version. sure she had a legal, repre a, a lawyer probably, right? Uh, did she have legal representation when you guys first got in court? Or? Yes, she did. Okay. Yes, so did. I would imagine. It was know, a divorce attorney. Okay. So I would imagine that the attorney supported these allegations as well, that you called her. And so did you produce any phone records or anything? If, she, if you were supposed to call her. Did you produce your own phone records to the judge to show yeah. that there was no call yes. made by you to her? That's correct. There was no call that showed up um, according to the fact that I know she called into me. She called into the office that I was working out at the time. Okay, but there was no call. What, I want, what I'm trying to find out, there was no call on the phone records where it showed you calling her. Correct. That's correct. Did the phone records show her call to you? I had records that showed the incoming call. Um, the record that I had couldn't designate the number, but it did show the timing of the call. Of, oh, okay. It, it didn't have the number on it? No, not from our side, but from um, the phone records showing that a call was made out of the home. How did, how did you, time. so you went and got your own phone records yes. and produced them? Yes. Okay, okay, because usually, the phone well, usually, this is what I'm about to say, usually if the lawyer gets a subpoena for the records, then it will show her incoming call. Because a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, period. Phone companies don't like to show incoming calls because of privacy and mm -hmm. stuff like that. When they give you the bill, they just show the calls that you right. make. So if he had asked for a court subpoena and got it that way, then they would have to give up everything. But as long as it didn't show you calling her, did she give a time frame in her allegations? Hours no, when you supposed vaguely, to she gave a time in the police report, but it was just alleged. It, was it down it, to a day? The bottom line. A certain line, day that it was supposed the to The bottom happen? line, it was alleged to be in the afternoon of, I can't even remember the date, but. And there was no calls Absolutely. in the afternoon on that day from your phone? No, there was no call. Okay. There, it never happened, Joe. Okay. And, and there was a trial? In Correct. I pushed bench trial, for the trial. Bench I trial or jury? Bench trial. Bench I, tri trial. I pushed for it. was in family court. And um, we demanded uh, an immediate trial, and it was, um, we were granted within two weeks. Okay. So we were back in court in two weeks, and within that time frame, we had the alleged incident came up, and, you know, she told her story, which was fabricated. I told mine, and um, the judge never really responded. He, um, he told us that he would... Uh, get it back to us, his decision in the mail. Then when he called us back into court to give the decision, we had already heard it, and he told me, I mean, this I'll never forget, he turned to me and he said, you failed to convince me you didn't do it. And that's what he told you? Period. He, in a carefully scripted manner, he said, the preponderance of evidence, I, I won't forget this, it was, you know, it was one of those pro forma statements, the preponderance of evidence would suggest that he believed that I was the perpetrator. The preponderance of evidence. That's, that's how it was scripted. I, I don't understand. Why would he be using the preponderance of evidence? When there was none. It, no, it's, 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 first of all, you, you, have, you have three ways that the court system determines evidence. And it all depends on what type of court that it falls in. You got civil court, you got criminal court, and then you got family court. Mm -hmm. Your case should have been in a criminal court. It wasn't. It was in family court. It was in family court, but it's still a crime. So I don't understand why he'd be using a preponderance. They, Wait, let me finish. Okay. The preponderance of evidence is something that you use in a civil case. Well, that's, that's it not in what family you, court. Yeah, well. that's... He should, it, I'm not saying it, it should have been without a reasonable doubt. That's what it should have been. 
It shouldn't have been the preponderance of evidence. He shouldn't have, I don't know why he based it on a preponderance of evidence. It should have been. Well, it wasn't a criminal act because it was an alleged issue that we were having a discussion about. And the way they termed it was uh, domestic and it was not a criminal act. Okay, but the bottom line is the preponderance of evidence is usually a way that you use to determine cases in a civil court. That's why when you have lawsuits, they settle before you get to court mm -hmm. because the other opposing side have to prove that they didn't cause your injury. You really don't have to prove anything. They have to prove that they didn't cause your injuries. So it's based on a preponderance of evidence. And, and there was no evidence. I mean, it was, it, well, it was I bizarre. Mean, I mean, if you, if you submitted phone records, she said you made a call. Okay, but what was the outcome? The outcome was I was told approximately six weeks later that they were keeping the visitation time with my kids the same, that um, they were going to order me to go to an anger management course, and that um, they attached probation to it as well. Even though it wasn't a criminal offense, they attached probation to it. How long was the probation for? One year, and it was an absolutely the most humiliating, the most demeaning process I've ever, ever been through. I could imagine. I mean, during this time period, you're not seeing your kids, you know, you're not seeing your kids. You are in a system where, where I mean, is the divorce was something that you wanted or was it something that your no, wife more, wanted the, more than you? at the time, I absolutely didn't want it. You wanted to keep your family together. Yep, I sure did. So that had to be hard. That had to be hard on you. Real difficult. The most difficult thing in my life, for sure. Okay. Wow. Wow. And you were seeing your kids how much? How, how, how much visitation did they Sporadic give you? Sporadic on the weekends, you know. How, long, how, many, how many hours on the weekends? Any overnight? The girls wouldn't. Just... Um, I, I had two girls and a son, and the girls wouldn't do an overnight. They became alienated not only from me, but from my immediate family, including my mom, where I was staying. You know, okay. for whatever reason, the kids started to develop this, you know, feeling that my side of the family, for whatever reason, was the bad family and her side was the good family, I guess. Had they ever felt that way before? No. When you guys no. were together. So no. the separation, all of a sudden, the kids feel that your side is the bad side of the family. So. Yes. So it alienated. A simple way of putting it, yes. Okay. I assume you love your... Your children very Without much. a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. I assume, I assume you love your children. Now, all this mess has taken place. You've got the divorce now. Tell me about the divorce. Who, who, who was the judge who handled the divorce? Valentino. Valentino. Mm hmm And um, we went through trial. Um, you know, once again, I was given the cookie cutter time with my kids. I didn't think that was fair. I didn't think it was right. And what I came to understand about the way the court system is done, when you go to a trial, the first thing they determine is, are you going for custody? It was also told, you know, wink, wink, you know, unless you have something that's really um, serious illness to your, your, you know, mental illness or drug abuse that you can, you know, document, you, you won't get it. Okay. And even you, in those cases, there's a strong possibility you won't get it either. Right. Because um, uh, as long as the individual who is accused of mental illness is compliant with all of the resources out there for them to maintain certain stability, then the courts ain't going to have nothing to say. Now, if they find mental illness and you're not compliant, you're supposed to be taking medication. You're not. Right. You're supposed to be going to see a doctor and a psychiatrist. You're not and you're not compliant, mm -hmm. then they'll have some issues as far as your ability to be able to, you know, maintain the children, you know, in the, in the state that you're in because you're not compliant with your uh, mental illness. So in the divorce, did you, did you ask for more time with your kids? Yes, it, it became a, um, for lack of better terms, a pissing match between myself and my ex, soon to be ex at the time. Okay. Um, what would be fair and, and you know my thinking was look I want a relationship where I can come 
you know, share it as close to 50% of the time as possible. Right. And I, and I don't see any reason why we couldn't have. Um, I was very close with my children prior to this. Mm -hmm. There was no really logical reason why I wouldn't have been given the opportunity to have something closer to 50% of, of the time with my children. Who was the law guardian on the case? Lisa Morris. Lisa Morris. And Lisa was appointed the law guardian during the domestic violence? Um, uh, part yes, of the case? yes. Um, I was assigned um, responsibility for her. Um, it was that part of it, interestingly enough, came from uh, Supreme Court so that, you know, we would be responsible. And in this case, I would be responsible for paying her fees. If it came from family court, you know, there'd be no responsibility. So this one came from from Supreme Court. So tell me, what, how was you feeling? What was going through your head while well, this was going on with you? Logically speaking, I thought, you know, I would just be able to speak with, with her on a professional basis, explain my, my wants, that the fact that the kids should have as much involvement with both parents, assuming both parents are competent and are, are fit parents. So you're talking about explaining this to the law guardian? Then. Yes, and initially um, she went with the option of giving me two nights and every other weekend. Okay. As opposed to a Wednesday. Okay. Um, that was after she interviewed the kids. She interviewed my ex. She interviewed me. Um, I got some character witnesses. Uh, I had her talk to someone at my employment. Um, to let them know about my flexible schedules okay. and the fact that I, I do have flexibility as a sales manager and I could um, make a flexible enough schedule to accommodate all my children's needs. So when I ask what was going on in your head, what I mean is emotionally, how are you feeling? How I was are you a wreck. feeling through all this? An, an emotional wreck. It's, um, it's kind of like quicksand. If you can just visualize getting caught in quicksand, and the more you move around, the, the deeper you sink. It's a, it's a really hard concept to, to understand until you're in it. I mean, you can talk to a lot of people that have gone through it, and then they get it. They know what you're talking about. Right. Until you've been in it and into the system as deeply as I was, you have no idea. There wasn't a day that went by, there wasn't an hour that went by that I didn't think of my situation and just feel awful about it. Just wow. felt awful about it. And you was able to maintain your, 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 your self-professional at work? Thankfully, yes. Thankfully, oh, that yes. It must have been hard, man. It, it wasn't easy. I jumped through a lot of hoops. Um, I remember my territory change, and I also went through um, four restructures in a, in a six-year period, six -year period with three different ownerships of our company. Okay. So it was, it was um, very difficult, but thankful for me I had a pretty long-standing relationship prior to this, a lot of success with the company, and, and so I had some good people that were uh, pulling for me. So Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, your divorce, um, how long did that last? I mean, the, 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 I'm looking at the, the paperwork, and oh, my God, this is thick. These are tra court transcripts here. Right? There, there was a three-day trial, about a half-day piece. So that's, you know, one and a half days of court time transcripts need to be reprinted that's what it is wow so what was the outcome in the divorce i mean uh well um i i ended up uh only with sporadic time with my kids um two years later it was um just an alienation process that took place where i didn't see my any of my children for like a year period of time. Okay. And gradually I, I did get, I reached out a couple of times at my kids' athletic games. I'd go to my sporting events. Uh, it, was, it was a horrible thing because the, the children were pitted against one parent. And I was asked to leave the ballpark a couple of times by my daughter, which is horrible and I hate even ad admitting it. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I, I feel that it's necessary to let people know that this is what you can expect right. um, moving into a, a, a situation with a divorce. And it was a horrible, horrible experience. Wow. So 
You paid child support through all this. Yes, from day one I did. Um, okay. That was never an issue. Um, I ended up going through uh, an, uh, an appeal because I wasn't happy or content with the conditions. I felt as though um, I wasn't seeing my, my children an adequate number of days okay. in, in a month right. um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but the only thing that I absolutely contested was the, um, <clears throat> the amount of the maintenance. And tell now, me about that. What, what, what was the issue surrounding the amount of the maintenance? Um, basically, I was ordered because of the length of the marriage, uh, approximately one-third. So for a five-year period, I was ordered to pay, in addition to child support, $105,000. Wow. Um, you know, I'm not a wealthy guy. All right. You know, I'm a paycheck-to-paycheck, paycheck, small bank account, you know, um, a rental property, and... A house right so you know month to month it was a big struggle and um, what ultimately came about was the <clears throat> the order came at the the date of my after the trial was we were 27 and a half months okay into this thing so a little bit over two years the award was force adjusted um, based on the date that she filed for divorce which was 27 months and the amount of the award was 1750 a month okay so the net net was <clears throat> I was put into arrears of excess of fifty thousand dollars wow and all along I had been paying everything okay so everything what, so what exactly were you contesting the amount was too high I mean yeah the, the award was itself in your appeal the the appeal was based on the fact that throughout this um, trial um, my ex had falsified four documents which stated she didn't make a penny and that was not accurate. She had a uh, under the table job. She was making some pretty good money. I know she kept pretty good records although she didn't produce any in court. You know they 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 asked me to produce the records and I was kicked out of the house. <laughs> so she, she, she had an under the table job. She did. She sold furniture, bought and sold furniture. Okay. I used to help her with it. I helped her get it started. Oh, so it was a, it was a business that she had? It, it was. was a job, she, it was her she business. She had a file for a permit to do it. Okay. But she wouldn't admit to any of the income until I got her on trial, and then she did ultimately admit to it. The judge actually imputed money to her because it was so obvious that she was doing it. Um, but ultimately, he threw, it, he threw out that money out of the equation. Okay. When he decided to um, take what I made back out the child support, and then they used gross dollars in, in the whole thing. They didn't split the, the property correctly. Um, you know, I had a fully depreciated rental property with X amount of equity. She had the residential <clears throat> property that was given to her. Right. And um, there was a difference of $16,000, supposedly, but the two properties really weren't like because when I go to sell that property, I have to pay the government. Right, It's fully exactly. depreciated. Exactly. Um, she won't have to. So uh, ultimately, uh, that was part of the appeal, that they didn't handle the properties correctly. How did they handle it? What? They, uh, they what? told me that um, I was to pay her the difference in the 16000 after they split the 401K. When, and when you think about it, I mean, a kindergartner could have done a better job on paper. You know, a math equation that, that has one side with 16000 more, what you do is you split the difference and say, pay her 8000 Okay. Well, he didn't. He just put, pay her $16,250. So that was the first issue. It wasn't done correctly. But more than that, um, his formula that he put down on paper, he didn't explain why, but he just said basically pay her 105000 over a five-year period, which amounted to... $21,000 a year and there wasn't a clue as to how I was going to get this. And that was, was that the child support or the maintenance? That was just the maintenance. That was just the maintenance. The child support was about 20 grand. Okay. So did, I was did, ordered did, was, to pay. Were, were the child support figures correct? Yeah, they, I they had it all documented because that was done through child support collection okay. as well as um, right immediately after the trial before my appeal the um, I, I had to start paying the award right away. Right, right. So what, what they basically did and what I became 
to understand the system was if I can't pay, they will garnish my wage to the tune of two-thirds of my take-home. They allowed me one-third of my take-home pay. Wow. That's it. So I had to, and then bec that wasn't enough to, to meet the award. So what it would do is it would put, put me further in arrears. Right. That, that's how that formula works. Wow. So not only was I 50000 something in arrears because of the way they, they did the force adjusting on the award, uh, but in the paperwork from the, the, the judge, I was to get a credit for my overpay of child support because right. I, I was paying for both properties. I was um, turning over more than what I was ordered to pay right. on a weekly basis um, in the interim. Right, okay. Um, we set a date to have that in court. Right. And um, it was um, Judge Barry for this one. He turned it over to um, Phil Latier, right, who was a hearing officer, not even a judge. Right. Um, and remember, this was just to give me credit for my overpay of child support against this enormous award. Right. And um, the process was put in place so that, that I, I gave the paperwork to show how much I'd paid over in child support. Right. She objected to it, so they had a hearing. Okay. They had a hearing. We, we um, went to the hearing, and, and I was appalled at what happened. What happened? What happened uh, the the process would be that you both, we were both represented by lawyers. <coughs> Excuse me. Their lawyer presents after the hearing a proposed order what they think would be fair. Right. My lawyer did the same. Right. My lawyer did it absolutely square one, right by the book, the way it should have been. And it should have left me at a deficit instead of 50 something thousand in the, in the hole, would have put me about 16,000. Okay. So manageable, yeah, I can do that a thousand a month. I'm done in 16 months. Right. Something like that. Her lawyer submits um, an order that was bogus, had bogus figures in it, mm -hmm. things that were determined at the trial that weren't, weren't supposed to be in this proposed order. Right. Showed up in the proposed order. She had a $48,000 error in her calculations. Right. She also um, had a proposed payout of legal fees. I'm sorry, payout interest on, right. on the amount okay. that was supposed to go from the date the trial ended, not the date when the divorce was thrown down. Right. So, right. and this was just last year when all this thing was settled. Okay. So, ultimately, they trumped up the award from 40 something thousand to 62,000. Okay. So I went backwards. It, you know, where I should have been 16,000 in the hole, even though I lost the appeal and the arrearage was placed at 16,000. Right. Should have been. What it ultimately ended up was I'm 62,000 in the hole. And so what they did is they, they took it on my 401k. But the most appalling part about it was. The, par the process. Right. And this is the way you picture it. You have my lawyer's petition, proposed order. Then you have her proposed order. Right. Phil Latier, who is the hearing officer, basically says, oh, this is his, and this is her proposed order. He took his pen out, did not, didn't do anything but scratched through the word, the word proposed. proposed. Initialed and, it and made it the and order. Made it the order with errors in it. Now that whole hearing was for you to get credit for my overpay for, of child support, and you never got that. No, as what a matter of fact, was put in the arrears. Further in arrears. Further in the arrears. Lesson learned. Wow. So now, all this have happened to you. Where were you at then? Because it, it, it now you're 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 doing the the. Uh, you're, you're an activist uh, with yes. the Fair Parenting Organization. How did yes. you get started in that? Uh, actually, I had a brother that was president. <laughs> oh, before. really? Yeah, like uh, four years or five years before I did. And, you know, part of my passion was, was fueled to the, the fact that I did not support him the way I should have right. going through this. It was one of those things that I was like, I'm sympathetic to him. I feel for him. I, I talk to him. 
I didn't understand what he was going through. Right, right, until you got in there yourself. I got in there and I got, once again, thrown into it with a, a fictitious order of protection. Right. That I challenged in court right away, was told, you didn't prove you didn't do it. And, oh, by the way, go to anger management and uh, you're going to be on probation for a year. Right, I mean, right. I mean, that's, that's how I got started in this thing. Right, okay. So it did fuel some passion for our um, cause, which is shared parenting. Our position you know, if I could take 30 seconds to explain that is... Go ahead, go ahead. We believe that the default position in any situation should be involved parents from both sides, assuming both parents are fit. So if you have two fit parents, it should be involvement to, the, to as close to 50% as possible. Okay. And, and when you hear our legislators tell us one size doesn't fit all, my answer to that is absolutely. One so size doesn't say, fit all. So when you say you believe that this is the way that it should be, what do you mean you believe? Do you have like a bill or something or a law or something? You're yes, trying we to get? do. What's it, what's it called? Shared parenting bill. Okay. There's literally a shared parenting bill in almost every state. Okay. And is there a, is there a website that the viewing audience can go to and get yes. to look at this shared parenting Yes, deal? yes, What's you the can. Website? There is actually two excellent websites. There's ours, which is equalparentsforchildren.org. Okay. Okay, that's up and going. Um, and the other one is um, the A um, American Coalition of Fathers and Children. Okay. So, and it has, the same, it has the same bill. Yes. Uh, and they're in websites. multiple states. That okay. is the AC, um, the American Coalition of Fathers and Children is a national organization. Okay. And we are um, an organization that also goes by uh, fathers' rights as well. Right. We um, gravitated away from the fathers' rights because we do believe in, 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 in moms and dads being involved with kids. Okay. Okay. And we don't want to send the wrong message. Okay. All right. Now, um... I understand you got a trip coming up to, to Albany. Yes. What's, what's that all about? Um, that's lead day where um, our legislators, our wonderful legislators, are um, confined to their, the courthouse where they, where they listen to any issues that any of their constituents have. Right. And um, the state rep, Joe Arrigo, has had a uh, shared parenting bill in his committee Right. For eight consecutive years. Right. And they refused to take it out for a vote. Wow. And all wow. we're asking, now simply stated, the bill says the default position from a New York State standpoint should be to look at both parents after a split. Right. Currently, the state does not. The state only recognizes one parent on a split, unless both parents settle outside of the, the court. Okay. In my case, I couldn't. Went to trial. Right. Right. So I was forced into a position of really having no standing. Okay, I have absolutely so, no standing. So Lee Day is all about uh, presenting it, our uh, side of the story. Okay. And why why that bill should be passed? Okay. Uh, do it, are there politicians that are? Um, yeah. Oh yes. It, it has to be spearheaded by um, at least one of the the state reps, and I believe it's the Long Island rep who initially, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. Uh, I'd like to give him a plug, but he's, he's a solid guy that understands he's had some children burnt in the system. Right. He's, right. Um, he's seen a lot of the abuse that's going on. Right, right. And so there are some good people out there and some good legislators that are trying to get this thing passed. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, um, now your, your, your organization, um, what nights do you meet? Oh, good question. I'm, every Monday we meet at the Super 8 out in Henrietta. It's on Lehigh Station Road, okay. right off 390. It's a um, very uh, grassroots organization. Nobody's paid. We're all volunteers. Okay. We're all former. Most of us find our way into the system the same way I described. Okay. And uh, find ourselves as uh, very uh, adamant uh, about fighting the, the system that's so ab abusive. And what's the, what's the address? Out there on Lehigh. Lehigh Station Road. Well, it's on the corner of West Henrietta Road and Lehigh Station. Right. I don't know the road, but okay. it's a Super 8. You, I mean, you can't miss it. 
Okay. And it's right off uh, the Lehigh Station exit off 390 also. Is there a number that fathers could call who are interested in, in um, coming to your meetings? Yes, and they can go to our website the easiest way. The, the, the most feedback we get and the best communication is on the website, equalparentsforchildren.org. Okay. And then you'll have numbers in there. It describes the meeting. It tells a little bit about organization. Okay. All right. Great. 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 And you guys meet on... Uh, Monday nights from okay. 7 to 9. Okay. And um, then we have um, some board of director meetings four times a year. That's our organization. We uh, rely on donations. Um, we have memberships. We, uh, once again, we have about 25% of our constituents are um, female. Okay. Beautiful. So we have moms, we have second wives, we have girlfriends, we have sisters of brothers that have been involved and they felt so strongly to get involved that we do have uh, active participation. So we would welcome men and women alike. Right. You know, and kids. We've, we have a lot of the parents bring their kids to meetings too. Oh, wow, wow. So, so um, what, what do you do with the kids when they're there? Uh, they, they're free to do uh, uh, their play, homework play and things and like that. There's little and... things on the side they do depending on the age they are. They can bring in their computers. Uh, we have a, a wireless laptop in there. If, you know, if the kids need to access it, they can right. do that too. Right. Well, that's good. That's good. And how long you been involved in this now? Five years. For five years. Okay. Yeah, I was a secretary. Then I was vice president for a couple of years and president for a couple of years. Okay. Okay. And I'm still active on the board. Okay. So. Okay. Now, on the trip to Albany, is that just? This year, or is that an ongoing thing, something that you guys do every year? Every year. Two year? So you every, do it every year. year. And um, I will say that our, our representatives give us resistance to do this. They don't even want to talk to us. Wow. Isn't that amazing? They just don't want to even talk to us. Why do you think that is? Why, I mean, why do you think? Well, I think it has to do with money flow and funding, to be perfectly honest. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, <clears throat> when child support collections are, are done from a state standpoint, um, they're conforming to the federal guidelines, and by doing that, the federal monies become available for the states that fund many projects, that fund their road to nowhere, their bridge to nowhere, whatever they want to fund. Their slush funds, their, their um, um, you know, vested interest groups, You've heard a lot of things about lately right. um, where they, they took a vote, in, you know, interesting enough, they took a vote um, to do away with earmarks for one year, and it was voted down in the Senate 78 to 22. Mm. They wouldn't do away with their earmarks. So what, what, what do you mean, the, the, the money that they're collecting from? Child support child collections. Support. Yes. And what it comes out to, and, and we can't get a, a straight answer from anybody, we've, we've done Freedom of Information Acts, um, we've, we've tr tried to do a lot, and we're getting uh, stonewalled. But what we've tried to do is, is, the understanding is out there, that as funds are collected by the state, because right. the state uh, was mandated by the federal government to do this, right. and the definition changed. Right. And it, it, it changed in the late 90s. Right to single parent families. So with that change in definition, they started to actively collect much easier. When initially they were going after predominantly welfare or people at, at, at such a low income level that they, they were unsuccessful in collecting. They shifted it when they decided to change the uh, direction and the definition changed okay. where, they, where they started going after not just welfare, but they changed it to say, hey, we're involved in collections for single parent families. What that does is it promotes divorce. It promotes separation because by this process, which is so horrible, and it just it forcefully separates families. It's, it's just, it's atrocious. And the government doesn't intentionally do this. Not only that, I mean, uh, you have um, no fought divorces too. Correct. Which, That's well, the, they don't, New York State, it's coming. I don't think is a it's no coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's, it's right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Judith Kay already said in her, her big commission study um, that that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that no-fault divorce is, is 
is really making it easy for uh, families to split up and just that much easier and separate. Yep. So do, do you, you still um, see your kids? Still uh, I see my son. Kids? I'm still actively pursuing my, my, my daughters. I'm involved with their funding their education. You know, I'm not turning my back on them at all. Beautiful. And, um, Beautiful. you know, I love them and they know it. Yeah. I think they know it deep down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I honestly believe they'll come around. You know what I'm saying? I do too. I believe that they'll come around. I do too. Wow. 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 That's a, that's a tough story. It, I mean, it shows some fortitude in you though. I mean, despite to go through all that, that you wind up an activist trying mm -hmm. to help other fathers. Um, you, you be, it seemed like it, it made you tougher. Yeah, it did. You know, the old expression, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you, it makes makes you stronger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I said that over and over and over during the, during the trials, I'll tell you. Wow, wow, wow. Well, that's good. That's good, man. Because, I mean, I, I, you know, I do court advocacy and stuff in the family court, mm -hmm. and, um, of course, I do the show, too. So I meet um, lots of fathers, and, oh, my God. They all can't understand what's happening to them. Right. You know, they can't understand why they their voices is not being heard. Nope. They're not being believed. Um, why their, their their time with their children is being limited. Um, it, it's it defies logic. Yes. It defies yes. logic. Yes, and 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 it's and it's hard sometimes. You know, I have to tell them. You know, you are in a system that basically has prejudice and bias against you because you're a man. Yes, absolutely. And favoritism. No doubt about it. For the woman. The equation that goes on in that court is, you know on one side of the equation, mm -hmm. they give the, the man 0% of the power. Yes, and 100% accountability. Of accountability. accountability. <laughs> and on the other uh, side, absolutely. they give the woman 100% of the power. And, and zero, zero accountability. And zero percent of the accountability. Yeah, I hear that comment. One of the biggest issues that I get coming through the door, you know, each and every month when they're first getting into it is, I have no say on that money. That money goes to her. She doesn't have to account for a penny of it. And there's, there's a zero accountability on that side. Right. And, right. and when you have zero accountability, all you have to do is look at, at the abuses that are, they're, it's rife for abuse. Well, it, it's, it's. Sometimes the titles in the family court for some of the actions that they take don't match the action or the response from the action. Like they'll call child support, child support, but they'll validate it as a payment that just initially goes in to help the home. Period. Exactly. That's how they'll validate it, but they call it child support. So when a father says, well, you know, my kid's sneakers are two sizes too small, and I know I just paid a thousand dollars in child support exactly. last month. Where's the money going? Where well, that money is supposed to go into the home, mm -hmm. you know? But there, you call it child support, right? I and, honestly think that because I know, and, 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 and I'm gonna say this honestly, it 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 costs a lot to raise a kid. It does. Oh, it, absolutely. It costs a lot to raise a kid. I mean, what I was paying in child support when my kids were with the mother. And now that I have full custody of the kids, it definitely costs more now that the kids are living with me and compared mm -hmm. to what I was given to child support. But I still think that the parent paying the child support should have some type of rights to, to, to stipulate some type of accountability to where some of that money is going. Absolutely. I don't think of uh, no parent, a man or a woman, should be paying child support to the other parent, the, the, the custodial parent that has the child, and the child's clothes are too small. Absolutely. Or the child's shoes don't fit. Agreed, 100%. But you look at the mother, her hair's done, her nails mm -hmm. are done, she's got the nicest clothes, she's got a nice car, and you go to see your child, and your child has on a onesie. Yeah, that's not right. I it's think that there right. should be some type of percentage where they say, okay, this, Definitely, you have to give an account for this percentage of this money. That mm -hmm. has to go to the child. We want to make sure we do see the child wearing uh, uh, adequate clothing, uh, this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Because I know a lot of fathers that they pay child support, and at the same time, and some of them pay a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. 
they give huge amounts of child support, and at the same time, they find themselves buying summer clothes, school clothes, winter clothes, well, coats, jackets. In, in addition to that, judges uh, typically, when they want to squeeze for more, they'll just impute money to them. I had a guy that came through the door. He goes, look, this isn't right. You know, I worked for Xerox for 22 years. I made good money. I paid all my child support, and now I'm being told that I made not only here's my W-2s, but I'm being told that I'm being imputed income. And all the judge has to do is say, I'm going to impute income to you. Wow. And, and that puts people in a very, very difficult position. When you just do the math, you know, first of all, the mistakes that are made, and I could tell you all the mistakes because I hear about them. One, they use gross dollars. Mm -hmm. What happens when, let's just put it on paper, you've got gross dollars going on there, right. where you've got 30% of a guy's paycheck gross, but we all know that that's not really what he's taking home. Right, right. Right? So you put it down on paper, 30%, and then you do the math. What happens when taxes go up? Yeah, yeah. That's it why comes I think, out of that's his why I think it comes out be, of his portion. It shouldn't be it should never be taken out of gross. It should Correct. be taken out of what he takes home. Yeah, agreed. Because that's what he's making. And and another fairer um, assessment would be if you have a, a situation where there is one payer and one receiver. I mean, there isn't a give and take, it's not a 50-50, and you have somebody receiving all the funds and somebody that's paying all this, all the funds and it's child support, why shouldn't the payer have the deduction? on the tax returns. Why? Right, right. Absolutely, why shouldn't the payer exactly. have Exactly. So that's one thing that they could be do, that, that, that the legislators could pass laws that would change the way that it has to be done. Okay. I mean, now, and these changes have to come. I mean, I, as far as the you going to Albany, like the lead day, yes. and trying to push the shared parenting bill, do you guys have a bill on the table? Yes, suggesting? we do. Suggesting? And, and that bill can be found on the same website? Yes, it is. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I think, I think they they, they should. And, be and able the to legislators do that. are they quite, um, quite frankly, they, they have a, a candid discussion with us and say, you guys come back in numbers and we'll listen. What they do is they have a little little mini lobbyist group, National Organization of Women, that that lobbies them the same weekend we go down for lead day. Right. And they're running around the hall just flaunting and you know making fun of us and and calling us losers and. It's just, it's really disgusting what right. goes on. It's but it's a front because they're in there, you know, handing um, campaign contributions to um, some of the legislators. I mean, it's really disgusting what and goes on. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I, if, I, if I could recall, last time I was in Albany, I believe I seen an office in, the, in our state capitol for the National Organization of Women. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. They got their I believe their I seen. A, I planted. believe I seen an office in the state capitol for the National Organization of Women. I didn't see one for the American Civil Liberties Union. I didn't see one for some of the various other organizations mm -hmm. that we have that are located in this state as well as national. But I do remember seeing an office that clearly said it had a, it had a, a letterhead over it and it said the National Organization of Women in the state capitol. Yeah, and on a, on a, on a smaller level, I'll, I'll give you an example. We tried to have brochures for our organization right. put in place in, in family court. Right. They wouldn't let us. Right, right. In the courthouse. They wouldn't even let us put our literature. Well, and I went down there and I said, hey, look, it. you've got um, literature on, you know, ABW, Association of Battered Women. You've got, um, you know, Violence Against Women well, Act, that's, that's, things that's, like that. Well, that's, that, because, that's because that court is built to have, to give the power down there to the women. It's but, not built... But that's not right, Joe, and that's, exactly, that's my point. Exact, uh, exactly. It's not right. It's not just. It's not fair. Period. It goes against everything that our forefathers fought for to make the type of America that they wanted us to Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Couldn't have if said you, it better. I mean, you look at the speeches by uh, Henry Patrick, uh, Jefferson, um, uh, our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag mm -hmm. ends off by saying, uh, with liberty and, and justice, justice for, for all. all. Liberty is natural God-given rights. Every yes. man has a natural God-given right to be a father to his mm -hmm. kid. Absolutely. Justice, it talks about our court system. It talks about our court system. Justice simply meaning fairness. Yes. Our court system is set up, and 
it, it's, it, the, the litigation process is set up like this. You have to have two people who have a dispute, can't settle the dispute, has to be settled in a court, number one. Number two, the issue have to be of a serious nature. Number three, the person judicating over the case have to be neutral, has to be neutral. Right. This is an American uh, 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 legal system. This is how our system mm -hmm. is set up. That's what makes our system and defines our system out of every system throughout the world. Yes. But when you look at the family court system, it is running rampant. It's polluted. With prejudice and bias. So the, so the person adjudicating over the case is not neutral. No, there's no doubt. It's so it distorts the whole process, totally makes it un-American to me. Think about what I said earlier. It's follow the money. You know the old saying, follow the money. You look at the money trail and you see the kind of money that's funding the general ledger of the states by the federal government based on their successful child support collections. And remember, not only child support is in there, but maintenance. All my maintenance went through that. Why right. should maintenance go through that? Why should there no, be no parameters for maintenance? I mean, he straightjacketed me right. with a maintenance award that was atrocious. Right. And I was right. a paycheck-to-paycheck paycheck guy. I couldn't afford the award, but right. it didn't stop the award. It's so powerful. Right. You know? Right. And, and these are the things that are just atrocious. But you have to ask yourself, why would they do this? Because they're incented to do this. Right. They right. have goal right. sheets. Judges have goal sheets. Right. On the top of their sheet, child support collection. Collections, collections. Well, why? Because it's funding these state projects. And I, I, and I heard something. I, I don't know how true it is. Because I haven't yet done the research myself, which I plan on doing. I heard that there are bonuses issued out to uh, child support collection agents if they collect, if they meet the gut. The, you know, the, the I wouldn't be surprised, Joe. I something. don't know that. I don't know that because okay. uh, my experience was not good in child support collections when right. I had to go down there. I mean, they do things that are just so bizarre you have no idea. Like, I'll give you an example. I'm finally up to date, right? I get my bonus. Right. It goes to my ex to pay my arrears, blah, right. blah, blah. I get left you know, a little scant piece of leftover. But I go down there um, the day after that bonus came. It cleared everything. All the arrearages were finally cleared. Right. Well, we had a day in court to get caught up before the bonus came. Right. Scheduled, it was early January. The way that they do is they post the first Monday of the month. Right. When, when it's due on a monthly. Right. Comes in, it posts on a Monday. My ex goes down and gets a certified statement on Tuesday that okay. says I'm uh, 1,100 in the rears because that's what posted for that two-week period. Right. But you weren't in arrears. I you wasn't weren't. in arrears. And I had a statement showing, look, this is the refund that I got from child support collections because they released the bonus. This was, it didn't matter. I mean, it was like so, talking so to a stone the, wall. She filed... A violation that you were behind? And yes, and then she when, when it was all caught up and she got her money, which she did, Right. She, we had our day in court, okay. and what she did is walk down to court. Court was scheduled for a Tuesday. Right. She walked down to child support collection and got a certified statement to show that I was, uh, the new posting that came, $1,188. I'm 1188 in arrears. So she brings it to court. She hands it to Margaret Bolt. He's 1188 in arrears. It's certified. I turn to Margaret Bolt and tell her, and she goes, well, it's certified. <laughs> wow. You know, it's just, it's atrocious. That's, That's the what bottom she said? Line. Oh, yeah. She turned around after I gave her the explanation. I said, look, here's my, my bonus check. This is it. I just got this from, I went down like on that Friday okay. to child support myself, uh -huh. and I got everything cleared. But the way that their uh, accounting works is they post on a Monday they can get a certified statement on Tuesday saying that I'm 1,100 in arrears, and it's a posting error. It's nothing short of a posting error because my flow of money to pay for that comes in on Wednesday or right. Friday. Right. But she's still showing it on Tuesday as I'm in the hole. Wow. So now what they did is they went to a, um, um, a system now where they, they, take, they make you pay two weeks in advance. Right. So that doesn't happen. Right. So net-net is you're prepaying now child support to stay ahead. Wow. You got to pay two weeks in advance. Right. If the order's a week, you got to pay a week in advance. Right. So let's say you were ordered to pay 500 a week. Right. Okay. 
if you were all caught up, you would need to then pay them, put 500 in the, into a savings account and give it to them or write them a check for 500 to keep from showing being in arrears the way wow. they post. Wow. See, they're, they're not sophisticated enough to post yeah. correctly or to coordinate it. My advice, and when I went into there, I said, hey, from a business standpoint, in, in uh, October, no, I think it's September it comes out. Uh -huh. They send every single person a statement saying you're in arrears because they do it the day after they post. Okay. And I said to her, I said, look at the wasted postage. Right. You know, these right. hundreds of thousands of, of people that are in this child support collection, we could save a, a, as a city, as a state, as a county, whatever it is. I guess it's a county. The county could save tens of thousands of dollars if they just avoided those bogus mailers. Wow. I know what it costs to mail. Right. And, you know, all they would have to do is fix their statement to, to give a two-week or one-week definition depending on, you know, if the order's a monthly, do it a month in advance or give them a month and see as a comparison before they send those, those out. Well, so they sent out a lot of erroneous things. Yeah, and it's a, it's a lot of areas where things need to be fixed down there. Yep. I'm serious. It's a lot of areas. Everything. I, know, I know when I do court advocacy, the first thing I try to do is make sure that the individual that I'm doing advocacy for, the, the, the man, exhausted all of his options before he decides to go through that court. Because mm -hmm. I know once they get him down there, I'm, I couldn't agree more with what's you. going to happen yep. to him. So if there is anything that he could do, some stone that he, yeah. that, that, you, that he didn't Unturned, know. Unturned, right, absolutely. Exactly. Do it. Because yep. I let them know you don't want to come down here. Yeah. Because what, what they're going to do is pour gasoline on a small flame that's between you and this Absolutely. Woman, where um, If the may, lawyers don't do it ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Where it may damage, you know, you two mm -hmm. chances of well, ever really being able to communicate. And, and it comes child. down to, and, and you make a great point, Joe, because what it comes down to is the system is set up with there has to be a winner and a loser. Okay. It's an adversary system. Okay. And that's wrong. Okay. I, I don't care if it's court. I don't care what you need to do. But if you want to make some constructive changes, what you need to do is fix the system so it's not an adversary system. Okay. It should be um, compulsory uh, uh, negotiation. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, I know this much. It, 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 it needs some compassion in it because you're talking about the family. I think the family court system needs to be set up where the parents involved who are separating are, 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 are trained in a way to communicate for the sake of the child. You guys are deciding that you want to separate and go your own ways, but you have a child or children involved mm -hmm. in this situation. You both have to realize that you still have to be sort of a family for the sake of the child. Absolutely. And so I think that... Couldn't say it better. Instead of this gasoline that they pour mm -hmm. on a situation, I think that it should be more counseling. Yes. Man mandatory counseling for yeah. both parents. Um, parenting classes for both parents. Yes. And communication uh, uh, training for both parents. I think this should be the process. I think the process should have more compassion involved in it. Agreed. Because this is the American family we're talking about. Our families are already in crisis as it is. Right. You know, already in crisis. So in, in any country, if it wants to stay strong, you have to make sure that you have good family ties. Because if the family's ties are not strong, thus go the home, thus go the community, thus go the city. Thus goes the state, thus goes the country. Absolutely. The family in our country is basically the backbone of America. And right now, our backbone is real weak because yeah. our family is in uh, so much crisis. We're winding down on time. I want you, uh, Tim, to give your address again very quickly okay. of where your um, organization Meetings? meets. Yes. We meet at the Super 8 Hotel, Motel. Okay. It's on Lehigh Station Road in... Henrietta. Okay. Uh, right off exit 390, there's a Lehigh Station Road exit. Okay. Right after, just, just past Marketplace Mall. Okay. Not too far past Marketplace Mall. Okay. 
Mondays, 7 to 9, first Monday of the month. Okay. Okay, if it falls on 4th of July, then it moves to the second Monday. Right, right. Okay? Website, very quick. What's the website? Equalparentsforchildren.org. Equalparentsforchildren.org. Okay. No spaces in there. Okay. Equalparentsforchildren.org. All right, great, great. Okay, I guess that's about all the time we have. Hey, thanks, Joe. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks for Pleasure. coming. Thanks for coming. Yep. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to our show. Um, once again, my name is Joe Lewis. I'm your host. Uh, you've been watching Justice Now, coming to you from Channel 15, the People's Network. Thanks for tuning in. Good night, and may God bless you.